Welcome to Rainbow Science Class. Show off your perfection with our LGBTQ Perfection line of shirts and hoodies, available now on our merchandise store linked below. Welcome everyone to Powered and Protected by Rainbows. I'm of course your host, Professor Pride. And on today's show, we're talking about the science of being transgender. But first off, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Anyway, on to our show. Today is International Transgender Remembrance Day. And this past week was Trans Awareness Week. So today is the perfect day to talk about how valid transgender people are. People have been identifying as transgender literally since the dawn of humanity. Some of the most famous times in history include the year 222, when the Roman emperor, Ella Gabalus, preferred to be called a lady even though she was assigned male at birth. Records show that people were identifying as trans or gender fluid throughout the Middle Ages. But it wasn't until the last century when people started to have a problem with transgender people for no apparent reason. Now, before we continue in our science and history class today, we should first cover some basic terms we'll use in this episode. Transgender is a word denoting or relating to a person whose sense of personal identity and gender does not correspond with their genitalia birth sex. Gender dysphoria is a term used to describe the distress a person feels due to a mismatch between their gender identity and their genital sex assigned at birth and gender fluid is denoting someone who does not identify themselves as having a fixed gender. In other words, their gender is on a spectrum and can change over time. Very basically, a child might start to feel gender dysphoria early in life, many times between the ages of three to eight years old. They begin feeling like they are a different gender from the genitalia they were assigned at birth. But early in life, this might be wrongfully diagnosed as something else. In fact, accredited psychiatrist Moret Altenay says, quote, a lot of transgender people who are diagnosed with bipolar disorder or depression or anxiety are actually suffering from gender dysphoria. The hope through our research is that we'll be able to properly diagnose these people and treat them appropriately so they don't develop depression and anxiety. Once a child shows signs of gender dysphoria and starts to realize they are transgender, there are two different types of transitions available for them. And here is where many transphobic people will say that a five-year-old is too young to know anything about their gender identity. And from their severe lack of education, they will accuse doctors of chopping off the genitalia from children. But that never ever happens, as you're about to see why. A child has the option of socially transitioning or medically transitioning. Socially transitioning means they will come out of the closet to their friends and family as transgender. They might ask people to use the proper pronouns, which match their gender identity. They might change their name to affirm their gender identity, and they might start dressing and grooming in ways that match their gender identity. This is called gender expression. This might include using a professional binder for transgender males to cover over their breasts. So far, these are completely reversible steps, which cause zero harm to the child. As the data sadly proves, if the family members, friends, teachers, or others around the child don't accept the child's gender, they are more likely to feel severe depression, anxiety, and are more likely to consider and attempt self-harm. The people around the child need to use the child's true gender identity, their proper name, pronouns, and allow the child to dress and groom in ways which match their gender identity. If a transgender male is denied from using a proper binder to cover over their top section, many times this results in the child using ace bandages or other elastic materials to do the same job. But these materials are highly dangerous for children to use, which is why the proper items are desperately needed if your child wants them. If a child wants to medically transition, they have the option of socially transitioning as well. But it's usually at this step when a child starts seeing a professional psychiatrist working in transgender therapy. Then after months of therapy, this therapist combined with their doctor both prescribe a puberty blocker, which basically postpones your body's puberty. 
Most times, you're on these puberty blockers and going to therapy for years before medical professionals would allow you to go to the next step in the process. We should note that puberty blockers may slow your physical growth, affect your height, and decrease your bone density, which makes your bones more likely to break in the future. In many countries around the world, including the United States, you cannot legally start the next step until you turn 16 years old. You also need your parent or guardian's consent, consent from a licensed psychiatrist, and consent from your doctor to start what is called hormone treatment. These harsh restrictions are because, unlike puberty blockers, most of the changes from hormone treatment cannot be reversed. For men, these include deepening your voice and growing facial hair. For women, this includes developing breasts and changing your body's shape. Hormone treatment can come in many forms, including a shot, pill, patch, gel or cream, or an implant. We again want to note that hormone treatment may increase your risk of blood clotting, high blood pressure, mood changes, and liver inflammation. But the most common side effects found so far are a lowered sexual desire and voice changes. All of these are reasons why your doctors highly monitor you on these medications. But puberty blockers and hormone treatment are proven to help your emotional and social development by making you more comfortable in your own body. Hormone treatment is shown to help trans people with depression and boost self-esteem. And most importantly, they might also prevent the need from future surgeries, such as the removal of your breast, otherwise known as top surgery. Finally, and only if you choose and your doctors approve, there is surgery. For males, they can receive top surgery to remove their breast, hysterectomy to remove the internal female reproductive organs, phalloplasty to construct a penis using skin from other parts of your body, and medioplasty, which makes your clitoris work more like a penis. For women, you can receive a breast augmentation, meaning you get implants in your breast area, orchiectomy to remove your testicles, laser hair removal to remove hair from your face or other parts of the body, tracheal shave, making your Adam's apple smaller, facial feminization to create smaller, more feminine facial features, and penile inversion vaginoplasty to create a vagina by inverting the penile skin. In order to even consider surgery, a person must be over the age of 16 with parent or guardian's consent or over the age of 18 when they still need their doctor and psychiatrist consent. They must also have been on hormone therapy prescriptions for a minimum of a year. These surgeries can cost tens of thousands of dollars, and many insurance providers don't cover the cost in some states. Before undergoing surgery, your doctor will discuss with you the medical risk involved. Because of the risk and the cost involved, many transgender people merely decide to socially transition and not medically transition at all. Even for the trans people which start the medical transition, most of them only transition with puberty blockers and hormone therapy and never get any surgeries. But no matter how a transgender person decides to transition or how much they decide to match their gender expression with their true gender identity, they are no less real or valid compared to cisgender people like myself. We are all equal and we need to accept one another, which is why we always suggest asking a new friend of yours what pronouns they prefer to be called before addressing them in a conversation. Now, there are some people out there which will never accept transgender people for being their true gender. Sadly, we hear it in the news all the time, from stories like J.K. Rowling and more. Even I, as a gay, cisgender man, have heard how transgender people should stay the gender they were assigned at birth. And that's a story I talk about in a recent live stream after a director I was working for told me wildly transphobic things in the workplace. I am lucky that my employer stands up for LGBTQ rights, but not everyone is so lucky. So if we're going to do this topic justice, we sadly need to take a quick look at transphobia. The thing you have to understand about transphobic people is their entire argument all boils down to one thing, science. 
No matter what argument a transphobic person might call out in the middle of their hatred, the keystone of that argument seems to be on a scientific basis. If you're not familiar with the word keystone, it's a term used in architecture to describe the central stone at the summit or the top of an archway, locking the whole arch together. Now, if only there was a way for us to remove that keystone and scientifically prove their cornerstone invalid, then every single one of their arguments fall apart as a result. And at this point, I think you know where I'm heading with this episode, because luckily for us, science proves that being transgender is completely valid. So let's explain how we know this. The most common argument that transphobic people will make is that you were assigned the gender at birth, which you were always meant to be. But as accredited psychiatrist Moret Altenay reports, we know that after a father's sperm cell fertilizes an egg in the mother's womb, that embryo starts to develop specialized genitalia, resembling male or female. Which genitalia it develops is determined by the father's sperm cell. But, quote, the brain and the body can go in different directions. Gender is not only in our genitalia, there is something in the brain that determines gender. So technically speaking, this argument saying you were born with the gender you were meant to be is correct because your brain was born the way it is and your brain doesn't switch out with someone else's. But gender is not determined by having a penis or a vagina downstairs. It's determined in your brain. So in February of 2015, scientists began publishing their scientific studies of the brain to determine what being transgender really means. Previous studies on transgender people started out with a huge bias of trying to find a quote, cure for a perceived mental illness, which in fact never existed. But this 2015 study was the first to begin with no bias and was merely conducted to understand what it meant to be transgender. The study was started by Professor Guy T. Chun, who is the head of department, clinical staff physician, and clinical researcher at the Department of Endocrinology at Ghent University Hospital in Belgium. The study was called the European Network for the Investigation of Gender Incongruence, otherwise known as ENERGY, and includes over 2,600 participants. While the study itself is very complex, and a study which only scientists could best explain here, basically speaking, researchers began following 2,600 participants throughout their entire life. And they do this in many ways for many reasons. Some parts of the research are trying to determine whether hormone medicine is working or if it has adverse effects on the body, which, as we mentioned a moment ago, it so far is found to be almost entirely safe. And other parts of the research are following the brain to see how happy the person actually is. Since the brain is where gender is determined, the main focus of the study was on the brain itself, using what's called an MRI machine. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and it's a large tube-shaped magnet, which the patient lies down inside of. Once the machine is turned on, the magnetic field temporarily realigns water molecules in your body, and radio waves then use these aligned molecules to produce faint signals, which are used to create cross-sectional MRI images. Most times, MRI machines are used in a patient experiencing pain to see if there are any organs in your body which have problems that the doctors can then try to fix. But in this study, the 2,600 participants were put in MRI machines to scan their brains and record brain activity. The researchers also had cisgender men and cisgender women go through the same test and finally, researchers compared the scans. On the left side of your screen, you can see the brain activity of a cisgender male adult. On the right side of your screen, you can see the brain activity of a transgender male adult. But you'll notice, they look nearly identical. And that's something researchers found in every single case out of the 2,600 participants. Their study concluded that transgender males have brain activity almost identical with cisgender males and wildly different from the brain activity from cisgender females, even though they were assigned female at birth of their genitalia. They also determined that transgender females have brain activity almost identical 
with cisgender females and massively different from the brain activity from a cisgender males, even though they were born male at birth with their genitals. In other words, the brain is 100% backing the hypothesis that your gender is identified in your brain, not your genitalia. And it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that being transgender is completely valid according to science. As you likely know from your science class in school, something can be a scientific fact if it is proven by one scientific study. But it can only become a scientific law if that study can be repeated and gets the same result. And that's exactly what Dr. Julie Baker from the University of Liege did in May of 2018. But the previous Energy study only conducted MRI scans on adults. And that's why Dr. Baker did her study by doing MRI scans on 160 transgender children and teenagers. Her MRI scans also measured brain microstructures using a technique called diffusion tensor imaging, which was the same technique used in the 2600 person study in 2015. These 160 new brain scans were compared to people of comparable age who were not diagnosed with gender dysphoria, and her result was identical. Trans male brain scans matched perfectly with cisgender male brain scans. Trans female brain scans match perfectly with cisgender female brain scans. Dr. Baker even noted that, quote, although more research is needed, we now have evidence that sexual differentiation of the brain differs in young people with gender dysphoria, as they show functional brain characteristics that are typical of their desired gender. As a result, she says, we will then be better equipped to support these young people instead of just sending them to a psychiatrist and hoping their distress will disappear spontaneously. But the limitations of these studies are endless. As Dr. Altenay says, some of the brain scans show people are somewhere between, sharing characteristics of both male and female brain scans. And this scientifically proves that gender exists on a spectrum. So if you're gender queer, gender fluid, or non-binary, these scientific studies prove that your spectrum of gender is 100% valid as well. Finally, I would like to note in the science of being transgender, that a transgender person can be either heterosexual, homosexual, or anywhere else on the seven spectrums of orientation. Many times people confuse being transgender with homosexuality because our communities regularly celebrate, protest, and identify ourselves in the same LGBTQ acronym of our community. But your gender and your sexual orientation are not the same. If you are homosexual, that does not mean you're also trans and vice versa. If you're transgender, you can be heterosexual, homosexual, pansexual, or anywhere else on the seven spectrums of sexual orientation, including emotionally, physically, sexually, mentally, sensually, aesthetically, and romantically, all of which we described in detail in our episode, What is Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity, as part of our Coming Out Advice series. For example, if you are a transgender male, because you are just as valid as a cisgender male, we should simply refer to you as a male instead of saying transgender male. Thus, if you were attracted to females, you would be heterosexual. If you were attracted to males, you would be homosexual. If you were attracted to non-binary people, you'd be scoliosexual. If you were attracted to two of those genders, you'd be bisexual and so on. This same principle would apply to transgender females, being straight if they were attracted to males, lesbian if they were attracted to females, and so on. As we mentioned a moment ago, every single argument that transphobic people have is based on the keystone of science. That's why we've decided to take the class on a little trip today through the actual science of being transgender. So what exactly does the science say about being trans? Well, science proves that your gender is not determined by your genitals, but instead it's determined by your brain. Then, brain scans prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that being transgender is valid and that you are in fact the gender you identify as. But contrary to what transphobic people will say for no other reason than to scare parents into signing petitions, no medical doctor is cutting off your penis at three years old. At minimum, 
you need to go through years of therapy by a licensed and accredited transgenderism psychiatrist. Medical doctors need to prescribe you puberty blockers. Then, at the age of 16, they can start prescribing you hormone treatments. After at least a year on those treatments, you can begin to talk about your gender reaffirming surgeries with your doctor, but most transgender people choose to just take the hormone therapy and never do any surgeries at all. And most transgender people simply will transition socially by asking their friends and family to call them by their true name and preferred pronouns. Most trans people won't ever choose to medically transition at all. So yet again, the arguments of these transphobic people are completely false. Thanks to the hard work of these two universities, Ghent University Hospital and the University of Liege, both located in Belgium, and thanks to Professor Guy T. Chun and Dr. Julie Baker, we now know a lot about being transgender. You should know that here at Powered by Rainbows, it took us just about six hours of research to do this episode. And that sounds like a lot of hard work for our research team to do. And it was a lot of hard work, so shout out to our research team. But if it only takes our show six hours to completely discredit every single argument transphobic people have, their argument must not have been based on any sense of reality. It merely took us the better part of an afternoon to completely remove the keystone from every transphobic argument you can hear. But just in case you're waiting for me to say it, I won't mention my personal opinion in this episode regarding whether or not transphobic people are severely stupid and uneducated for spewing hatred without first doing their research on the science they are basing their arguments on. But I will say two things to summarize my thoughts here. First, I think by this point in the episode, you already know my opinion on transphobic people's level of intelligence. And secondly, you now know why I always advocate for the inclusion of LGBTQ education in schools. Most people understand why I advocate for LGBTQ education in history class, health, and sexual education courses. But some don't understand why I mention that LGBTQ science should be made mandatory as well. This episode is part of the reason why. And because of that, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description so you can learn how to get LGBTQ education in your school. And for all you transphobic people out there who think you're gonna comment something really snappy to get back at me for proving all your science wrong, or somehow you're gonna change everything by proving all this science incorrect, well, guess what? Your comment is going to be deleted and you're gonna be banned from commenting on this channel ever again if you try that kind of thing, so good luck with that. Anyway, that's all for our episode today. As always, if you like our content and want to support more LGBTQ education in the future, please consider checking out our merchandise store or becoming a member. Don't forget to like this video, comment down below your LGBTQ friendly thoughts, hit that rainbow subscribe button so you don't miss out on new episodes of the show, and share this video with others. As always, I'm your host, Matt Haslam. This has been PBR. Thank you so much for watching. Have a gay day, everyone, and bye for now. Watch Powered by Rainbows Season 3, only on MHPTV.